Hi, Mr. Heffern here, and here's a video on Newton's Third Law of Motion. Okay, Newton's Third Law is best known as the Action-Reaction Law. According to Newton, for every uh, action force that exists, there must also exist a reaction force, equal in magnitude, acting in the opposite direction. Therefore, uh, forces always exist in pairs, the action force acting on the reaction object, and the reaction force acting on the action object. And you'll notice below, um, they are opposite vectors. Same magnitude, opposite direction, so opposite vectors. And here's a little example here. Um, if you push on the wall when you go swimming, the wall will push you back. That's an action-reaction pair. Two objects, two forces. Misconception. Many people assume since the reaction force is the opposite vector of the action force, the two forces must cancel out. Now this is obviously not true, otherwise nothing would ever move. The reason is the action and reaction forces do not act on the same object. There's two objects, two forces. So for example, if uh, this person, uh, this boxer, um, pushes or punches the other uh, boxer, then the, the hand acts on the, the, the other boxer and the boxer will act back on the hand which is why they wear gloves. Okay. Okay, another good example of the uh, third law is thrust. Thrust is an example of an action-reaction force. So here you've got uh, an airplane, the jet engine, uh, pushes on the air molecules behind it, and the air molecules push back on the plane to accelerate it. Um, here you got uh, a fan, the propeller pushes forward, pushing the air, so the air pushes back on the fan. If you put the fan on wheels, it would move. Another example is recoil. So this is a good one where people just don't realize Newton's third law until they've done this. So you get someone uh, picks up a big rifle, shoots it, and ends up flying backwards or the black eye. Okay, and here's a good one here. PC gunners, they think because they've uh, shot guns on a, on a computer game, they know what to do, and then they end up uh, doing something dumb like this. Okay, another good example is uh, the normal force. The normal force is an action-reaction law. So here the uh, the book pushes down on the table, so the table pushes back. And then uh, gravity as well, so the, um, the earth pulls the book down, so the book pulls the earth up. The difference is the book is tiny, the earth is really huge, so you won't notice the earth move, but it does move a little bit. Okay, gravity in space, also a great example. So here uh, the earth is kept in orbit by using the gravity of the sun. And if you were far away, you would actually see the sun move just a tiny little bit of a circle around itself as it's following the planet Earth. Okay, another good example of the misconception uh, is the horse pulls the cart, so the cart pulls back, so they shouldn't be able to move. Well, this is obviously not true. In fact, same thing for pushing a car. You push the car, car pushes back. You move? Of course you do. I've pushed cars. I've moved them before. So yeah, you can do that. So to figure this out, what you really need to do is look at a system diagram. So you want to have um, a free body diagram for every major object in the picture. So here we go. We got the cart, we got the horse, and we got the ground or the planet Earth. So uh, we're going to ignore the uh, force of gravity. There's three pairs of gravity forces. For example, the uh, cart's attracted to the horse, horse to the cart, cart to the earth, earth to the cart, uh, horses to the earth, earth to the horses. We're going to ignore those ones, but let's take a look. So here's the action-reaction pair that we start off with in red. So the uh, the horse pulls on the cart, that's the action. And so the cart pulls back, that's the reaction. But now, how do we move? So we take a look at the other forces involved. The horse hooves are going to push on the ground, so that's an action force. The ground is going to push back, that's static friction. And the horse, as long as the horse friction is greater then the cart pulling back, then the horse will accelerate. And if we take a look at the uh, the cart, the cart's on um, it's on wheels, so there's very little axle friction. So there's a large force pulling from the horse, tiny amount of axle friction, so the cart can move. Okay, so Newton's third law is better known as the action-reaction law. Uh, force pairs, forces always exist in pairs, and they always involve two objects. Force pairs cannot directly cancel out. 
other forces must be involved to have equilibrium on objects. For example, the normal force, there's a pair of normal forces. Gravity, there's a pair of gravity forces. The four forces together can cancel out. And that's it. Hope this helps with the action-reaction law.